Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show, back in my home for roughly two years of my life, up here in Camp Scatico in Elizaville. We're in Kingston, New York, with a independent artist manager, publicist, and just an all-around really decent human being, Kevin Calibro, oh, co-founder of Royal Potato Family. Kevin Calibro, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Yeah, it's good to be with you. <laughs> it's great to be with you, brother. I just want you, you know, as, as best as you can tell, I, I'd like you to talk about the artists that you covet, the aesthetics of the artists yeah. that you covet, every one of them that you've connected me with. Um, I just want you to talk about the qualities of authenticity in the musician themselves. I mean, I, I often say I get off more on the musicians than the music. I love the music, but I love the musicians. So fill in the blanks about your roster, the, the kind of aesthetics that you look for in artists, because they're all very different singular yeah and, and it's funny because people have a hard time c sometimes with connecting the the scope the genre scope if you will like on royal potato family and with a lot of the artists i work with and yet in my mind there's like a through line with all of them you know what uh, is that through and line? that's that's the, the the aesthetic that i think you're asking about which right. which first and foremost is about is about saying something with music, you know, that 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 connects us all, and uh, you know, lets us feel a certain thing uh, about humanity. You know, it's like there's it's it's sort of it's sort of intangible and hard to explain, but but there is that thing, you know, with. Here's the thing, how, how, but I mean, you don't, it, it, it's not like you're doing job interviews where you're like, do you, do you connect with, like, I mean, how do you set, how do you find, like, how, how, how do, how do the people wind up in the, in the, in the potato family? Well, it's a lot of... Is it very serendipitous kind of stuff? Oh, it's, it's, it's 100% or, organic. I like, love it. I don't it. think I've ever pursued an artist. Um, That's fascinating. For the history of this label, it's always been like, you know, someone who sends me a record that I'm like, is either I'm already friends with, I've already worked with outside of the label situation, or a friend of a friend or whatever, you know, and, and you know, you just take a closer look and it resonates. And it's like, you know, this is, this is cool. Let's try and do something, you know? And then there's things, I mean, I, I wind up saying no to a lot of stuff including people who who are friends or friends of friends who I who I think are really talented and might might actually fit within the context of what we're doing but it's just at a certain point it's like my bandwidth is only like so wide you know as far as, far as just having time and and I really the the point of doing it is like can I help you get to where you want to be and if if the answer is no then it's you know then it's no point of me getting involved you know but you know an another thing going back to the aesthetic mm -hmm. and how, how the how the music is always with with the artists on this label i can't i can't think of anyone where it's not singular singularly about the music first um that also lends itself to almost uh, across the board, everyone's really willing to scrape and suffer and sacrifice, you know, so much to, to make this, to, you, to you, pursue are you able to, music and to pursue Can you specify the sacrifice? I mean, that's what I call perseverance. Perseverance, sure. But what, is, what are the specifics of, what, what is the, uh, taking less d money or, you know? What, what, uh, uh, money first and foremost, definitely. I mean, there's so... You know, there, there's there's amazing musicians that I work with that could be, you know, doing sideman gigs and have a steady, comfortable thing going on, and they don't because they want to pursue their own music, their own. They want to feel it. They own. want to burn. And, and this yeah. is actually, they want what to burn, I, yeah. in my opinion, what I think is. Um, like kind of separates artists from musicians and and there's nothing no i dig there's nothing, a big part of my um, show yeah you know nothing 
derogatory or cynical there, but like some musicians are just great and they love playing music and any kind of music and you know if they get a gig their their dreams are coming true. That's you know? right. They're better on the, than a desk job. Yeah, yeah, better than a desk job or better than um, you know a, a studio gig and whatever. So and they'll just go out on the road and they're happy with that. But mm -hmm. then you know I think the difference is primarily people who are songwriters you know they they're just that that's their commitment in getting their songs their music their vision into the world and and that that's also a big through line in the aesthetic but you know there's artists too who are very w willing to to like sacrifice a bit of what they do uh, for certain monetary concerns, like you get a big label coming in that throws money at you, and it's like, all right, well, I'll wear those pants and I'll put you on. You lose all creative use, control. I'll but use got... that stylist, but like yeah, yeah. you pay for my record, and it'll be a little more comfortable. And and I I think the I think the thing with a lot of the artists I work with is nobody is really willing to do that on any level, which I think is kind of cool. Sometimes I'd be the one who would be like, why don't we do this or this? And I get nowhere with those ideas. And I'm like, you would be more successful if you listened to me. But but I respect the the singular vision, you know. Are there are there parameters? I don't I, I, how spe about like you say you get a lot of uh, not solicitation but friends, talented friends. They send you materials, you know. Mm -hmm. And you have to say no. And uh what do you say yes to? What are the what what for peeps out there that are completely bleeding authenticity and burning inside? What everyone's different, but what are those? What are the parameters of what you're looking for? Because there's a difference. I mean, you, it's also there's an art to being able to say no and and, and yeah. still having a relationship. Well, well, it's it's some of what I just told you. It's like I, if if I feel that like sort of singular thing happening, you know, it's like that draws me in, but. Uh, you know, it just it just resonates in some way. You know, I just hear it like uh, we have. I have this record coming out by the bass bassist Chris Lightcap on September seventh, and I, you know, I had heard his Big Mouth stuff, um, his band Big Mouth, mm -hmm. which is you know some of the freshest jazz I've heard in the last. Why do you say that? There's just something original about it, yeah. and uncompromising. And I mean, yeah, I mean, he brings in, I, he brings in like you can hear like West African pop influences and surf rock, and I, I kind of like that. That it's not just like, you know, just purest pure bop, fusion, yeah, 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 whatever. right, no. chops, yeah, that yeah, kind of, chops, yeah, right, I dig. Yeah, and chops is not something that interests me very much. No, it's not the Although chops. Although when people have like yeah. someone like Marco Benevento has. Or Chris Lightcap has chops for days, but like it's it's almost like to me the least of what they offer. Yeah, well, and they when all, they use it, yeah. they use it I just love, right. You I know? Love, no, I mean I also it's like a secondary thing for like them. I saw this video. Oh, we were talking about it earlier. You have Marco playing at a Evan. Evan Cressman, Cressman. welcome to the show, man. Thank you for the connection, babe. Um, Marco, I saw this Marco playing last night at at. Um, Big mean barbecue. He was he was um, there's like a festival set and there's just a little clip and he was burning. But when Marco does that, it's like it's it, it's not like just for the sake of showing off his piano playing skills. It like it's like a hurricane that just starts circling and well, and, it's, and it just and it pours started, out of him. It it's, feels it started, so natural. It's, yeah, it you know? started back in Jersey when he was playing 20 minute versions of So What for people and they'd be like that sucks or they say that's <laughs> fucking great and he was just. He was letting his spirit come out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so that that spirit there's a big key word, you know. Like when yeah. I say it's that intangible thing, but spirit is, you know. I, I, one cat I wanted you to talk about. Uh, I've just connected with him and uh, through Royal Potato Family and. Uh, Katie's here. So, hi. Katie, hi. Hey, we're doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> come join us if you'd like. Yeah, you can come join us. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were in a hurry. <laughs> oh, we are. I just want to ask you about Farmer Dave Sure. How yeah. did you connect with Farmer Dave? Well, Farmer Dave, I don't really uh, know, but that well, I've had a few conversations with him just recently. But so you, I, you, have, you haven't hung with him? Skipple players or anything like that? No, 
because the skiffle players they really can't tour. leave california though i mean that was what he said to me i was like why come come east to this festival today and and uh he's like we can't leave anyway farmer dave uh farmer dave yeah i mean he so i just talked to him recently for the first time he because of the skiffle players and he has this, a solo record coming out that's like what's the name do you know what's the name of it again Something about love. There's love. I mean, it's yeah, all love. I'm with forgetting but, the name of yeah. it. We haven't set a release date or anything. Right. We're, we're figuring all that out right now. But the record itself is really. What do you? What about amazing. the Skipple players? I mean, how did? I mean, how did that come together? So I did. Uh, I worked with Mapache. I think that. Yeah, that came first. And through this label out there, Spiritual Pajamas, that. Um, right. This. Dude, uh, Eric, t otherwise known as Toast, <laughs> and Britt from Folk Yeah, own and uh, yeah. So I was helping out with Mapache, and yeah, it went it went well. And then I started working with um, spiritual uh, with uh, skiffle players. So, yeah, which is amazing because I've always been a huge Beachwood fan, Beachwood Sparks fan. I mean, from ten fifteen. I don't. Did they go back 15 years? But from the from the early first record, like I love that band, and I obviously love Neil Casal. You know, I I loved Neil before the Chris Robinson Brotherhood, and then when I started working with the you know, we put a Neil's record Sweet in the Distance out on um, Royal Potato Family, and then after that, not having to do with Neil, I I started working with Chris and. So you've got those guys, and then I love Cass. I love God, like Dan Horn, like who's also somebody somewhat new to me, but like he's he's a stone cold genius. I we're about to see him, and we're gonna go real soon. I just uh, how did you? I mean, if you you grew up in the East Coast, so how did you get your connections to? When did you first meet, meet Neil? So Neil, I met, I had known Neil's, like, a few of his solo records, and um, then I knew Gary Waldman, Neil's, like, best friend and manager, um, from working with Lettuce. He was, like, co-managing Lettuce. You were for, working with Lettuce? Huh? You were working with Lettuce. I was working with, I worked with Lettuce um, on the Fly record and a bunch of tour press. And I worked with Soul Live for a bunch of records. Um, and then, so Gary was co-managing Lettuce, and he was like, you know, my, my buddy, this is like a perfect example. My buddy Neil has a solo record. We're trying to figure out what to do with it. And I was immediately like, Neil Cassell, I, I love Neil, you know? Like, let's, if he's into it, let's do it. <laughs> and, then, and then that's become like a really, like, you know, Neil's like a, a really important guy, you know, to me, you know? He's, so that's, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but that's... Uh, no, I want you to the festival. Oh, and then the skiffle yeah. players, so... I mean, Farmer Dave appears, he appears to be a mu the muse for the band. They're all, like, really just yeah. very, you know, they're off in their own little well, I tangents, think, you know? I think there's this really incredible uh, California, we call it, we, like the cosmic California scene going on right now. It's I mean, cosmic, yeah. Maybe... The CRB is sort of like the hub of that a bit. Um, Beachwood Sparks and Gospel Beach and some of those bands are like the, um, uh, you know, like the Beachwood is kind of like the, the originators, originators yeah. yeah. And it's all, um, you know, and Howlin' Rain is part of that to me. Ethan Miller. Ethan Miller's. Uh, uh, let, let me. How, the what's the? How do you? Pache, it, the future. If, yeah. If, if, yeah, we're gonna. If you. What is your genius? What do you do to solve problems quickly? Ma mainly meaning people that are unknowns in this day and age. How do you get them on a tour circuit to start? <laughs> I, I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> how, have you, how have you done it with some of the artists you've managed? Uh, I mean, just play, just play gigs and hope something connects with enough of an audience where you can keep it going. You know, but I don't have the magic. I mean, you should talk to the guys at Red Light or something. Maybe they do. I don't, I don't know, you know, like, 
but maybe they also just like so i mean if you that but i mean if your clients are things that are yeah i mean what I, I just want to know what i mean aside from being just a very accessible really good you know in terms of communication what are the 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 quality the things that you bring to enhance the royal potato family because you're trying to get stories out of all these cats metzger yeah. haas mm -hmm. I, I you know all these beautiful people mm -hmm. so how do you enhance that what's the calibro magic that's what i'm trying to get at <laughs> well i think don't be humble i think well i think first and foremost i'd like to think it's something similar to like what I described as looking for in the musicians, just a, a pure singular like dedication to it. I mean, the, <laughs> I don't have kids. I don't like have a hobby. Uh, you know, like this is what I do every day, pretty much. So I think that's probably first and foremost. And you know, and I, I also would be remiss if I did not give a shout out to Joel Dorn. Thank you. I was yeah, who, we were talking uh, about that on the way up. Who really gave me the space to like have a career like I do which is which I think is pretty unique you know I've beyond um bingo beyondo and you know I learned just so much from Joel like you just you just do it every day and you know what do you learn do it every day and you don't you know you, right. don't, I mean, you don't compromise you don't uh you don't sell yourself out you don't uh, take shit from people who, just because they have more money will try to like you know you know run the board <laughs> um, you stand by the people you know you believe in and put the music first also sometimes what you do this is a big thing with Joel like the things you do have success with the money you make from that you use it and you put it back into the to the things that you want to see get get you know, find more of an audience. And that's that's something, Self you know, like Joel will always say, like, you know, I use my success with Roberta Flack to make more Roland Kirk records. <laughs> I, I use my success, you know, Les McCann and Eddie Harris had a left field hit with Swiss Movement. Yeah. Well, you know, I could, that let me, you know, do two more, two records with Donald Dean on drums, he's Compared tuning in right now. I mean, yeah. Donald Dean played on Compared to What? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, that's the beautiful thing about the Jake Feinberg show, this, this intergenerational connection. But what you're really yeah. saying is you live for music. I mean, you live for, the, you live for it all. That's your passion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. What is the best, in this time that we live in and all the relationships that you have to juggle and uh, what's, the, what's, what's your... What's the most important qualities of leadership in this time? It changes kind of, but in, in this time, what do you, how are you leading? Uh, I think I'm leading by, I, I mean, my goal is to be a partner for artists on the, on the business side, on the, you know, on, I, you know, like I, I, I prefer artists to be, you know, staring at the clouds and chasing butterflies <laughs> and you know getting you know, off on that and writing you know, tunes and yep. doing what they do and like giving them the space to do that and I'll I'll uh, you know I'll hold it down on the other end and you know and I definitely like I definitely feel like I let again like I, I might be more commercially successful if I didn't think this way but I definitely let the music let the art lead the commerce rather than the other way around I've, I've always been drawn to that approach again going back to for the layperson for the layperson yeah. art meaning maybe play make an impact first and then do business yeah, let the when art I was, when i was like a little bit younger like you know i got a job offer from bird and i got at, you know i was had the, i started at a big music pr firm i mean like working with the Spice Girls and R. <laughs> Kelly and like it taught me everything like I didn't want to do and it taught me a lot about how to do things like right. on a professional level so I learned but it also turned me taught me a lot about like yeah you know like I don't want to be part of all that you know I want to be part of something that's like grassroots and organic and uh, you know just the, the music I love and and a lot of that also comes from you know I, the Grateful Dead also means a lot to me in that way, you know. Um, but you weren't seeing them in the, very yeah. formative years. Like I saw the Grateful Dead and 
fell in a bunch and you know fell in love with that attitude and ethos and that has also like really can inspired me you know I, like especially at that point in my life you know I can't say like it's like a thing for me anymore but which is also weird because now Marco plays and <laughs> uh, you know and Netsker and Drywitz and Everybody else. Well, it's all, it's all, it's all, Tom it, Hamilton, the, who are all yeah. put records out on Royal Potato Family, and of course, led by Joe Russo, and they're almost like, you know, the penultimate Grateful Dead a band interpreting the Grateful Dead catalog, you know, and that, that's kind of weird the way that's certain. Well, they're, they're putting their own spin on it, and it, yeah. so it's your, your vision is coming into, into form, and even though maybe there's no real vision there, it's just it's all percolating. But the, the, the before I let you go, I saw Mapache in Vegas. Um, I think they have the ability to touch hearts. To touch hearts. Touch hearts. Oh yeah. I mean, what do you talk, talk, talk to the people watching around the world about Mapache? Well, Mapache is Sam and Clay. They're early twenties, and they're they're an acoustic duo that both play acoustic guitar and sing into the same mic. Into and the same just, mic. That's a very. I did. I, I did not think about and that. And they yet. just like, they just. They're just like, two two souls in communion to quote the Grateful Dead. Um, but they are like, and that's that's special, you know. And they write really beautiful, amazing songs. Excellent musicians, and they're and they're young, and that's exciting. Like to see young people. <laughs> you see, like so many young people, who are just into like their, you know, music being made on computers which is fine too but these guys are just playing acoustic guitars and they're like 23 24 and writing great songs and I mean the thing the thing to me about like electronic music is great and I love it but the I mean there's a thing about acoustic music that's connected to uh, like nature and just a more human you know expression and so it's it's exciting. It used to be the only way you could do it, and now it's a novelty for you. Yeah, in a, in a weird way, yeah. it kind of is. It's uh, right. Yeah, you're just ahead of that curve. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, uh, Kevin Calibro, yeah, you quick Vodakovich story, maybe. Yeah, Nola Tet. I mean, I, that thing came out of the gate, and now like Singleton, Vodakovich, Dylan, uh, ha, they're, I mean, they're they're in the they're in the milieu of my zeitgeist now. Yeah. I mean, what the heck? Where did I mean you work with Haas? And then, I mean, how did you get hip to? to well, yeah. I I mean, there's another band like it. we talked about Joel, and I mean, I I owe a lot to Haas, Reed Math, Mathis, and Jason Smart. That that Jacob Fred Jazz Odyssey trio was kind of like the first. They were pushing the envelope. Band that I worked with that was like making new music because when I was with Joel all those years, we were doing a ton of reissues, and well, we did some new stuff, but when. When I connected with Jacob Fred, it like it kind of took me into this whole world, you know. And that that Jacob Fred Jazz Odyssey trio, that that music is just incredibly powerful and original and visceral, and I, it's it's crazy. Most people don't even hear it anymore you know but that's true th this is like one of those things when you're it's not music made for pacification and that's what music is made for today on the large so that's why it's buried god you know i was just i was just in montauk and uh we long, were at, long island long island yeah and we were at this like pretty nice spot like poolside <laughs> just playing this like ridiculously bad music meant for pacification like <laughs> lifestyle identity music like you know exactly like, you know, you're, you're drinking a corona and the sun is shining it's like <laughs> what this is so bad who's listening to this who's settling for this but whatever no and it's As my uh, wife said there's uh, <laughs> all sorts of people in this world and everyone there's room for everyone so. right but you want to be able to for, for your, like my daughters and stuff you want to make sure that they can detect authenticity and some of those people are tuned out they don't even know that they no, don't they wouldn't, and, yeah, and, it's, and if you can't yeah. start then it carries over into all phases of existence and especially culture mm -hmm. which is why Royal Potato Family is important we're on our way to can you pronounce the name of the festival? Huchica? 
I might be saying it wrong. <laughs> Every, yeah. Huchica, nice. but it's the only Huchica. one. Is, is there other stuff going on? Primarily, most of that is going on on the West Coast. This is kind of the first operation here on well, the East Huchica Coast. Well, Huchica was started by Eric Johnson of the Fruit Bats on the West Coast. Oh. Fruit Bats? You know that band? Uh, no. Oh, no. They're amazing. You got to check, yeah, it, check out. it out. Yeah, check it out. Eric Johnson. Incredible. So he was but, his brainchild that he got that started. Yeah, and I don't know if he's... I'd, so then Britt from Folk yeah got involved. This is my understanding of it. And I don't know how much Eric is involved with the East Coast one, but, you know, Folk yeah is presenting it out here, which they're really a, never come off the West Coast, so it's a cool thing, and uh, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, Vetiver was there last night, and just a lot of the cool like you know cali the the bands we were talking about that that like cosmic cali yeah. yeah yeah it'll be interesting to check it out kevin Coward, bro much love to you continued success thank my brother you. thanks thank for being you, part man. of the program thanks for all the uh, spreading the word on all the good stuff out let's there. go have some fun man this is the jake feinberg show see you later